In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly get started with using Topaz Photo AI. This is a standalone workflow. I'm also starting with a raw file, but really this is gonna work the same way whether you're using a JPEG or a TIFF. There are some minor differences in, in working with a raw file, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and you can see I've got the app loaded. We also have videos showing you how you can get your photos from Adobe Lightroom Classic and Adobe Photoshop, so check those out. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just using the standalone workflow. So I'm gonna take my raw file and I'm just gonna drag it on to Topaz Photo AI. Now, the first thing that I want you to notice is Autopilot, which is right here. Autopilot is the brains of Topaz Photo AI. It will analyze your photo and it will suggest uh, recommendations on how to improve image quality. Now, this is really important. You may not know this, but there is a preference panel for Autopilot, a configuration panel. So if you go to preferences and then go to Autopilot configuration, you'll wanna pay attention to this because this can impact the way that Autopilot works for you. Now, I'll quickly go over each of these four sections right now. You can see I am using the default settings. Uh, and so if you ever make any changes to any of these settings, and you wanna go back, just click on reset to default settings. So the first is subject detection. You can see here that uh, one of the first things Autopilot would, will do is it will look for a subject in the photo. If it finds one, you'll see subject detected. And if you hover over the word subject, you'll see a mask applied to what subject was detected. You can refine that and we'll go over that in a minute. But the point is if you go to autopilot configuration and let's say you have none selected and then you load an image in Topaz Photo AI, you will see that no subject was detected. And if you're curious why that is happening, the first thing that I would do is go to the configure autopilot uh, window here and make sure that you have one of these options selected. So if you're using primarily portrait photos, then portrait would be a better uh, profile, same thing with landscapes. For me, I find default to be just the, the all around best option. And then I can refine afterwards. Face detection, I have this enabled as well. If you do open a portrait where uh, there are some lower quality faces, like lower resolution faces, for example, face detection um, will automatically apply what we call face recovery, which is fantastic. It's almost like magic. And it will attempt to uh, improve the quality of any faces or any low quality faces rather. Sharpen, um, so if autopilot detects that the image is suffering from a lack of focus, um, you can automatically have sharpening applied. And these are the levels of uh, you know softness, so to speak, that autopilot will kick in sharpening. Um, by default, we have medium and high as our options. If you really want to be aggressive, you can enable low. Um, I don't typically do that. Uh, if, if an image is slightly soft, like the case here actually in this photo, um, I'll manually enable sharpen, but it's totally up to you. And then auto upscaling. So uh, this is auto upscaling is in increasing the resolution intelligently of your photo. By default, we have enhanced small images enabled. So if you open a low resolution photo, uh, autopilot will automatically uh, increase the resolution or upscale it anywhere from one and a half to four times the resolution. Um, and there's also an option if you want to set what your uh, maximum upscale is by default. So if you open any photo and you want it to be upscaled, you can set that here. Or if you don't want any upscaling, you can turn it off. So I have enhanced small images. This is a full resolution raw file, so there is no upscaling applied. And so those are the options that you'll want to look at with the configure autopilot dialog box. So when you're done, you can close this out. And then another option under preferences that I would recommend paying attention to is enable lens correction. If you work in a host app like Adobe Lightroom Classic, the way I do, then you already have a lens correction profile that you can apply. It has its own lens database there. That's typically where I would apply that kind of a fix. So, but if you're using standalone or, or the host app that you have does not have lens correction, then yeah, definitely enable it. But uh, you can see I have it disabled. Otherwise there would be a check mark next to it. So those are some of the first things you'll wanna pay attention to in Topaz Photo AI. Another thing that you wanna pay attention to is the processor. If you're having any sort of performance issues, um, I would recommend trying to select the CPU um, or your actual GPU, but by default, auto will allow Topaz Photo AI to select the best option uh, that it thinks for performance.
All right, so now that we've gone over those configuration options, let's actually work on the photo. So you remember I dragged the photo onto Topaz Photo AI, Autopilot detected that it was a raw image, so it's using raw image data, um, and it found a subject which it automatically applied a mask to. And then it also detected that there was some strong noise and it applied noise reduction accordingly. So let's go ahead here, I'm gonna zoom in to 400% and put the focus box here so we can get a closer look. Um, and I'm also going to go to a side-by-side -side preview uh, just so that we can see the original and the edited version next to each other. So you can see here that yes, the noise is gone. If we go to like one of these kind of soft flat background areas, you can see that noise is completely gone, which is great. But I mentioned earlier how I was going to probably add sharpening manually. And so I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to enable um, sharpen over here. Now autopilot didn't detect that uh, there was any softness, which is fine. So all I'm gonna do is enable it, but I'm gonna drop that strength down uh, about half. And you can see that all, it just brings a little bit of extra detail to the image. And so let's go back to the single view and fit the image. Now, I mentioned how a subject was detected and it was. Again, we hover over subject and the, um, the bird here was highlighted, but there's some areas that have not been highlighted that I actually do want sharpening applied to. Just to give you a little bit of context, as far as the subject detection goes um, and the mask that's created, that is currently only applied to where sharpening is applied. So it's not like noise reduction is only being applied to the subject. It's only sharpening. And you can see here, subject only is enabled under sharpen. If we go to the raw remove noise, there is no such option. So I want sharpening to apply not just to what was detected. I actually wanted to apply to uh, this entire bottom part of the frame. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to refine here. I'm gonna click on it. And then you're gonna see that you now have the ability to either change the profile of the subject detection. Again, for me, default works fine, but you can also change the brush size. And you can see over here under the AI brush, there are four size options. There's tiny, small, medium, and large. And you can use the bracket keys to cycle through them. But to make things quicker, I'm gonna use the large brush size and then I'm gonna speed up this part of the video while I brush in this bottom area. And now I have everything that I want masked in so that sharpening will apply to everything here. And all I need to do is click on done to commit that mask. And so just looking at the entire image here, it looks great. Again, we can zoom in, get a little tighter shot. Let's put the focus on the top over here. And you can see if I press and hold, that is the original. You can see all that noise and kind of that lack of definition. When I let go, it's nice and clean, but it's also very sharp. So that's basically it. If I wanted to, I can upscale the image, but I'm not gonna do that because this is not a portrait photo. We don't need to use recover faces or enhance resolution. So with that, I'm gonna click on save image and now we have our save dialog box and there are a few things that I want to go over here. If we were working with multiple images, you would see them listed here in the queue because when you have more than one image selected and you click save, you will save all of them at once. Then under the export settings, you have a few options in terms of the file name that Topaz Photo AI will save out. The prefix field, that will put whatever you want at the beginning of the file name. The suffix field will put whatever you want after the file name. So I like to have dash Topaz Photo AI that tells me instantly that the photo was saved out with the app. But then I also have the toggle enabled to add applied filters to file name. And that'll give me even more information. So when I save the file out, in addition to the dash Topaz Photo AI suffix, it'll also have raw noise and sharp. And so I'll know that for this particular file that was saved with Topaz Photo AI, it used the raw noise reduction and sharpening. Save to location, by default, I have original folder because I drag the photo from the desktop, it'll save it back to the desktop, but you can also choose a folder of your liking. And finally, you have the format. Now, I like to have preserved input format. What this means is if you open a JPEG up, for example, it will save a JPEG. If you open a TIFF, it'll save a TIFF. But with raw files, if you open a raw file, 
preserve input format will save it as a DNG file. So that's just, that's the one thing that you want to keep in mind. Um, you will get a DNG file and it will allow you to continue your raw editing workflow. So that's really good. Uh, so when you're done here, all you need to do is click save. And then on the desktop, you can see here is the file. And like I mentioned, that is the file name. It's the original file name with the Topaz photo AI suffix and then denoise raw dash sharpen. That's because we had that add applied filters to file name option. Uh, so that is how you would use Topaz Photo AI, the basic options, and it should give you a really good head start to truly improve your image quality on autopilot. Be sure to check out our other videos on Topaz Photo AI and our other applications. And if you want to try Topaz Photo AI or any of our other applications for free, head on over to topazlabs.com. Thank you very much.